it's like, would you prefer to be born an, an aristocrat 2,000 years ago or whatever, 1,000 years ago, or would you prefer to be born poor today? And I think the reality is you probably prefer to be born poor today because, you know, your life expectancy is still double or more that of the aristocrat. You're, you're likely to live a much more healthier, healthier life uh, even, even without, you know, lots of financial means. Now, obviously there's some stark um, uh, issues this there. Is on, this is on, av- on average. On, on average, yeah, on average. Let's, let's be careful to, to put that but in It goes, but it kind of, um, yeah, you've, you've, got two, you've got two views here. Like, and, and to finish the previous point, go back a couple of steps. I mean, one of their key things that they say is that the concentration of wealth is a natural phenomenon and an inevitable phenomenon. So the wealth ascends to that aristocracy in every civilization ever. It just happens. It's how that gets fed back into everyone else that makes the difference in the fate of that from a civil civilization within the four walls perspective. And then, but then if you zoom out further, which is what you're kind of talking about now, is that that accumulation of knowledge and uh, ability to produce things and to share in these social systems that we have grows the whole pie over time so that, it, and that is such a powerful force. It's way more powerful than that accumulation of wealth in the in the in the moment because that means that you're actually better off potentially on average being someone who's at the bottom of that uh, distribution and poor than the person who's accumulated the concentration of wealth a few centuries ago yeah it's like you have a much higher chance of you know, living beyond the age of four or five years old is probably one one of the big ones, right? You know, like that's that's so so true. That's a great point. Yeah, because the, you know, even even the aristocrats were plagued by. You know, they had all the financial means in the world. They had all the slaves, or even if they were being paid. Um, not very much workers f- helping them and the best access to health, etc. But they still had miscarriages after miscarriages or death after death in terms of, you know, I, I think it was like it was like a it was very much a hit or miss thing for for a um, a woman to get pregnant, you know, as to whether she was going to survive herself, let alone the baby. Well, that's right. Is, let alone is, the baby, exactly. Which is terrible, you know. Uh, it's whereas terrifying. now it's, it is t- absolutely terrifying. Um, and can you imagine going into that? I just, you can't even, <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I don't want to continue the lineage on, you know? <laughs> it comes, yeah, exactly. It comes back to um, that quote from one of our episodes, the few, they say the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed. So mm. you, you could still find places where that's the case in the world. And I was thinking as you were saying that, that back in the aristocratic age you still had sewerage in the streets flowing down the gutters, you know, and a city was a very unpleasant place to be. That still happens all over the world now. <laughs> it's just I don't see it walking down in Melbourne. Um, but you would have to say even with allowing for that effect, we're still in a much better position than we were. I mean, famine is almost something that we've, for the moment, can't say forever because Nassim will get on the phone, but that we've kind of dealt with him. He had, he had to have a mention throughout the episode, so well, well done. Mm. Oh, at least we're on track to dealing with famine almost 